Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Sean P here, and today we are going to discuss which programming language is the absolute best that you can use. How's it going everybody? It's just Sean here and you know I hear all the time a lot of people ask me well how do I get into programming? Which programming language should I choose? You know Python's the best. Should I get into JavaScript? I mean it's still C++ still relevant and, and I'm here to tell you that all of these programming languages are very very relevant. There's literally over 700 different programming languages so where do you start? How do you know which ones to choose from? Well that's what we're going to talk about today because a lot of people, um, you know, they really get caught up in, in trying to, you know, learn a thousand different languages. And I'm going to tell you a few secrets that might help you out. To really understand what the best programming language is, it really depends on what type of application you want to build. Now, let's go over a few things here. Do you want to build a mobile app? Do you want to build desktop applications? Do you want to build desktop applications for Macs or do you want to build them for Windows or Linux? Do you want to build IoT applications? Do you want to build data science applications? Do you want to build web applications? What type of application do you want to build? That's what we're here to talk about. And the truth is, it really depends on what your personal goals are. Well, what if I get into building mobile apps and I don't like it and I want to go for the web? Well, I mean, then you're going to have to switch languages, but luckily, I'm going to tell you what languages you need to learn for all these different types of devices. So like I said, we really need to break down the different programming languages per device so you can actually understand um, you know, what programming language you need to use to build whatever it is you want to build. So let's go ahead and start talking about desktop computers. Uh, desktop computers are all purpose, general purpose programming languages. Uh, they have operating systems uh, that are built on kernels, typically the Unix kernel. And uh, we have Windows, Mac, and Linux. Now these three operating systems do share some programming languages, uh, but they do have some differentiation as well. Computers use general purpose programming languages. These are programming languages that can actually manipulate and control uh, the device memory. That means we can actually take information and we can store it in memory slots, or we can point using the code from these general purpose programming languages to actual memory slots in the computer hardware. So for Windows, typically we're going to use the .NET style programming languages. We're going to use C++, C Sharp, and Objective-C. We can use Java and we can use Python on it. And as you'll see that we could use Java and Python on all of them. So on a Linux computer, we typically could use Java or C++. Now we could also use Python on Java, uh, but not as a general purpose programming language. Uh, Python is a object oriented programming language and it's an interpreted language, meaning that it is a abstract layer of programming on top of these general purpose programming languages. And then last but not least, your Macintosh computers or Apple computers, um, we're going to use C++, Java, Swift, and iOS. Now Swift and iOS are proprietary programming languages built specifically for Macs. So if you are going to be working on Mac, you want to design an application for a Mac, these are the programming languages and frameworks you're going to go to. But let's say you don't want to build an application for a desktop computer. What if you want to build a video game? Well, to build a video game, we use gaming engines, which are complex devices that make it real easy to add graphics and logic to actually create an awesome 3D, 2D game, or whatever it is that you want to create. Uh, and these gaming engines come in several different flavors. The ones I'm going to talk about are Unity and Real Engine. And the programming languages that you will primarily need to know in order to build video games is C Sharp for Unity and C++ for Real Engine. Now let's say you don't want to build a video game. What if you just want to build a mobile app? Well, what do you need to know? Well, there's two types of different operating systems for mobile apps. We have Android and we have iOS. Now mobile applications, unlike computer applications, don't come with a full service set of graphical user interface parts. You have to know a completely different front end framework to to design a user interface. And the programming language that we use uh, across the board for Android and iOS to design 
these are XML. Now, XML is a markup language that is a superset of HTML, which is a web UI language. This just creates all the front end graphics that a user would typically interact with. Other than that, we need to add logic to our mobile app. You're going to need to know Java. Java is the primary language for Android. iOS, keep in mind, they do use XML. They also use iOS and Swift. Well, what if you want to build some IoT devices? Well, first, you got to realize that building an IoT device, you're actually programming circuits, and then you need to access cloud services on the web. So you will use web services, but let's just talk about the board for now. In order to program a board, uh, which looks similar to one of these, you need to understand C++, or in the case of this, you would need to know Python. These are the programming languages you would need to know to actually add code into the microchips to actually control other devices and then sync up with some cloud services so you can collect data or you can display it and use it and control it, uh, this device uh, from your mobile app or a web browser. Uh, but what if you wanna just do data science? What if you wanna run machine learning algorithms? What if you just want to, you know, run statistical inferences and uh, crunch data, transform data. Well, we got a bunch of different programming languages specific for data analysis. Python, R, SAS, Kieras, TensorFlow, and several other programming languages. And these are the programming languages of data science that we use. And then we have the web, which is by far my favorite. And like mobile apps or desktop applications, we have to build user interfaces using a programming language called HTML and CSS. Now, HTML is a subset of XML. Pretty much every web page that you've ever seen is built with HTML. But in order to make these UIs actually come alive, collect data, be interactive, then we have to use scripting languages like JavaScript, PHP, and Python. These are the core languages uh, which are used in building web applications or websites. And these languages have evolved and are constantly evolving, building awesome frameworks such as Node.js, React, Angular, Vue, Django, and much, much more. All of these frameworks level up scripting languages by providing rich features such as state management, immutability, and many other very cool things. And not only that, but these frameworks allow us to build cross-platform applications that can be used on any device in any operating system, whether it's a mobile device or a desktop application. Using the web, we can build hybrid mobile applications. We can use frameworks to build desktop applications, IoT devices for visualizing data analysis, building augmented reality apps, and so much more. Now, the major difference you need to understand between the programming languages of the web and the programming languages for native devices is that native devices are not dependent on the internet. They do not require an internet connection for those applications to work. You simply download them into the system and the system runs and compiles them. Whereas the web, the only way web programming is gonna work is inside of a browser, which is an application on a mobile device or a desktop. And we facilitate using web code inside of this browser. But we can use these web languages to build full native applications, progressive web apps, servers, WebSocket communications, and very robust enterprise applications. So which one is the best language? Round one, fight! So let's go online and let's actually check out what the top 10 most popular programming languages actually are. This is an article from Northeastern University where you can see here that number one is Python and when number two is JavaScript. Now, if we go to PyPol, we can see that the popularity of programming language index, which is created by analyzing how often language tutorials are searched on Google, shows that Python is number one. Then following number two is Java, and then under that is JavaScript. Now keep in mind, now keep in mind, if you're wanting to build something for the web because that's the device you choose, then you're gonna want to go with JavaScript. Again, this all comes back to what it is that you want to build for. Other than that, you can see the popularity of the languages and you can read and research some of the articles that I left you, um, you know, the career choices, the pay rates, and all these different things for learning these types of language. But JavaScript 
you're going to be able to learn front-end frameworks such as React and Angular where they have state management and all kinds of different cool uh, Redix capabilities, whereas in Python, they do have web capabilities, um, and you can use Python on any device, but they do not have frameworks uh, that allow you to build hybrid applications, cross-platform applications like JavaScript does. So go to the description below and I want to know what type of application you want to build because remember this is all based on the type of application you want to build. Do you see yourself building mobile apps? Do you see yourself building web apps or hybrid apps or doing data science? Tell me in the description below. So which programming language is actually the best? Well I'm glad you asked because if it was up to me I would personally choose If it was up to me, I would personally choose JavaScript because JavaScript uh, just offers a whole plethora of different options and frameworks for me to build and create and make stunning visual graphics and user interfaces and do data science and everything else. Now, Python can do all these same things too. And fundamentally, all the core principles and concepts of programming work in both JavaScript and Python. So if you know all the core principles of how to program in Python, you can carry those over to JavaScript because for loops and conditional statements and algorithms, they all work the same and you set them up the same as you would you know, the programming language. The only difference is you're gonna have some minor differences in syntax. And if you wanna look from the job scale, you can see that Python is one of the most popular languages uh, and then JavaScript is next. And then you have the JavaScript frameworks, uh, which are also very popular. So it's really up to you and what you want to build. If you want a more well-rounded um, education in computer science and learn a programming language that is really easy to pick up and that can lead you to building all kinds of really cool, intricate things for all types of devices, then you can pick Python. But if you want to get hands-on with building stuff like cool UIs, web applications, graphical interfaces, cool visualizations, and start collecting data and databases and wiring things up and learning how to use all kinds of cool tools, then I would say JavaScript. Either way, you can't go wrong. Learn one of those languages, stick to it, and don't try to take on the world by trying to learn every type of language out there. Because like I said, all of these core principles work across every single device and they work across every single platform that you're going to use. Programming principles are all the same. They're tools that we put in our tool belts as computer scientists, and we use them to build and architect awesome applications. And don't forget, if you got any value out of this video, please hit that like button. And if you don't already, and you're looking over at your UI and YouTube, and you don't see me in that subscribe column there, then subscribe, hit that bell notification, and then all the videos on all the technology,